AMD releases the source code. Steam Deck gets embiggened and Intel doesn't play nice with AMD. Who would have thought? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Thank you all for dealing with the lack of episodes this week. As I mentioned in Monday's episode, I was shooting a TV show pilot for a show called Food Scouts, which essentially is the idea of going around to the different sports stadiums across the country and examining the food that's at each of them and seeing, hey, are there any delectable treats, any tasty morsels, any good things that you could probably stuff into your mouth? I had a great time. It was fantastic. Kyler went with me. We had a great time shooting it. It was a great crew. I don't know if it'll ever air on TV, but it was worth, you know, putting hot news on pause for a hot minute. But we're back here now. Let's get into the hot tech news. And just like I said, it would come back. AMD has kept to their word of coming out with FSR 2.0's source code. This is something that they said that they would do when they announced their Fidelity FX Super Resolution when it comes to upscaling video games. And since it's been a year since the launch of FSR 1, they are now coming out true to their word. So they published this over on their dedicated FSR 2.0 page on GPU Open, and you can find all of this over on GitHub. You can read the documentation, and you can start playing around with the source code in case you want to. So there's the FSR 2.0 API, full C++, and HLSL source code for you to be able to play with it in case that's something that you're into. I don't know coding well enough to do that, but it's there. Also being brought out with this is now FSR 2.0 is currently in development for the Xbox consoles, both the Series S and X, as well as the Xbox One. This is being promoted by the GPU Open team that FSR 2.0 should start coming out for Xbox games, hopefully sometime within the next year or so. I mean, it was much quicker when when it came to the PC games, FSR 2.0 hit several games in quick succession. It seems like if the game developers are actually interested in implementing the FSR 2.0, it should be simple enough, based on what I gather, to actually do it. So hopefully it rolls out. I've seen a lot of comments from people indicating that they want DLSS to be done with, especially since it's not only proprietary software, it requires proprietary hardware in the RTX cards. This is something that we've seen AMD and Nvidia go back and forth on for over a decade at this point, AMD choosing to make things open source and accessible to everybody, including things like FreeSync and other game development tools that they've come out with. NVIDIA choosing to go with the proprietary, we get more money route in things like G-Sync and HairWorks and all of the things that the game works, the stuff they've come out with that. It doesn't always work out in AMD's favor that they've provided open source stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean that game developers are gonna pick up on it because NVIDIA seems to have a higher marketing budget, so they pay for game studios to actually utilize their technology. My favorite thing that I've ever seen was Final Fantasy 15 on the PlayStation 4 had NVIDIA Gameworks, Hairworks specifically on the consoles running on AMD hardware. As far as I'm aware, it's not even supported on AMD hardware on the freaking PC. So, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. It's honestly about who has the deeper pockets and who makes things easier for the game developers as a whole, not just in the development phase, but you know, if they uh, toss you an RTX series GPU in a full system for you to do your game development in order for you to use DLSS, are you gonna really say no? I don't know, but it does seem like a lot of game developers are choosing to have these work side by side. Many games having both DLSS and FSR 2.0 support. Let me know what you think of this down below in the comments, but AMD keeping to their word. Good to see them do that and keeping to its word. Crypto goes up. OK, you ready for the crypto stonks? Bitcoin up 3.13 percent right now to be over twenty one thousand dollars. I did not check on crypto at all this week, so I don't know how it did it have a, you know, a worse Sunday, but it's peaked up and stayed above twenty thousand dollars over the course of the week. Ethereum up 6.5% to be at $1,100 and Dogecoin up 2.46% to be at six and a half cents. It had more of a bumpy ride, but obviously this is on a smaller scale since it's only six and a half cents. But in case you thought crypto was going away, oh no, no, my friends. Okay, we're getting ready for the next phase. Okay, number one, crypto bros denying that anything's wrong as long as you have fundamentals in your blockchain, everything's gonna be okay. Number two, if it's in a bear market, you just buy more of 
of the dip. It's technically not going down if you dollar cost average on the way down. You're going to make more money eventually. Number three, anybody who says that crypto isn't the way of the future is just spreading FUD. And number four, part of this step is uh, new implementations of hardware because Solana is getting its own crypto phone. OK, I don't know if you remember HTC did this. I think it was called the Exodus. It was a blockchain phone. I never did enough research to know exactly how it was blockchain besides like wallet management or if it like was it providing a node to some sort of altcoin. I'm not 100% sure. Seems like a gimmick. Solana teaming up with people who made the essential phone, the Osam OV1 is being reconfigured into a Solana NFT blockchain device. It's got decent specs, uh, the, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, all of that good stuff. The company is saying that the world needs novel hardware companies to support the future that is Web3, building out an ecosystem that looks to the future without being burdened by past legacy ecosystems. It's hugely exciting and that uh, it, it's bringing out its Solana mobile stack, which is a decentralized application store to run an Android based setup. I don't expect this to go super well. It's gonna cost a thousand dollars. I don't know, maybe it's just the skeptic in me. If you have a good legitimate reason why everybody needs this phone, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, it feels like Crypto Bros already figured out everything for what this phone can do. It's not gonna do anything revolutionary, so I guess this is for the diehards, I don't know. But speaking of new technology that is taking the world by storm, Steam Deck actually has Tons of playable games. The latest update is over 3,000 games are at least playable on the Steam Deck. 1,755 of them are playable. 1,800 of them are Steam Deck verified, which means that it runs at a consistent frame rate, doesn't have a ton of hiccups or issues, and a much lower number of games, only 1,505 coming in as unplayable. So over 3,000 are actually playable. 1,500 is the unplayable amount, and Valve continue to update this. Game developers continuing to update this. You love to see the support. And there's also a new launch of Steam Deck accessories from the company JSOS, Saux, JSAUX. They reached out to me for an ad spot a while ago. They never got back to me. I said I would be interested because some of these actually seem pretty cool. There's a kickstand for the Steam Deck. I want that. Then they also have this pretty decent dock, which for for all of you know the type C docks that are out there, it's really difficult to get one that has a stand built in, but then also has the USB-C cable in a way that actually runs it properly. So seeing that here, like it's not revolutionary, but they combine the things that are otherwise a difficult thing to get together. And I kind of want it. If only they responded to my email, which was a response to their email asking if I wanted to get paid to promote it. And I'm just doing it here for free. I'm also gonna do this with this new open air frame case that's coming out from Nagao, I believe is the name of the company. I purchased something from them previously. It was a GPU mirror. You can go check out our UFD video where we did the top five dumbest tech products you need. I think that's what we called the video. Anyways, it's an open air PC case, as you can see here, fits a full ATX motherboard. You got a graphics card, you got liquid cooling on there, but the bingo, bango, oingo, boingo is that it can actually mount a monitor as well. It supports VESA mounting of 75 by 75 or 100 by 100 so that you could just have a LAN party rig. I've wanted this for ages. I'm surprised that we're just starting to see it now. I like if anybody uh, has availability to Amazon Japan. Can you like send me an email? I, 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 I want this. I'd like, I just, I want, I want to have this. I'll carry it around. It'll be heavy, but it, you just, Yes, and Intel is saying yes to DDR4 on 13th gen Raptor Lake. We've got some new details coming out about some motherboards that are gonna be produced by ASRock, indicating that there are Z790s and H770 motherboards, but then there are also the D4 variants, which in the current generation stands for DDR4. So it does look like it is confirming that Intel is supporting DDR4 on this next generation of CPUs as well, which means when AMD upgrades to their AM5 socket and their DDR4, are five exclusive they're actually going to be pushing the boundaries a little bit further than intel was willing to do even though intel supported ddr5 first they gave two generations of transfer for that which i i like i i enjoy i 
if they're going to give us options, I'll take it. And they're giving us options in their ARC GPUs. We talked about in a previous episode of Hot News that they have officially launched in China. And now there are more details coming out with regards to performance, pricing, and the fact that it doesn't work very well with AMD CPU. So the A380 coming out in China and certain outlets comparing it to the 1650, the 1050 Ti, and the RX 6400. It's mostly comparable to the 6400. It's slightly slower. The 1650 is about 11% faster. And the A380 is, seems to be significantly faster than the 1050 Ti. But as I mentioned, when we initially got the benchmarks, I do think that the A380 is a much better GPU, even if it is slower than the 6400 in these third party benchmarks. It has H.264 encode and decode, which is something that AMD dropped. And I keep hearing in the comments whenever I bring this up of like, not that many people stream, not that many people actually edit videos, Brett. You're just looking at a small piece of the pie. I get that. I really understand that not everybody's gonna use these features, but it is a problem when they provided that feature for a very long time at this price point, their competition is doing it and they remove it completely because that might not preclude regular gamers from doing it, but then it makes an issue in the open market when people are looking to find a GPU. Let's say somebody wants to buy a used GPU for editing and they can't look at the 6400. It used to be a price point where you could get a certain set of features and now it is no longer there. It is a bad move for consumers. It is a ridiculous move by AMD. None of their competitors are doing it. I don't want to see this become an established trend in the industry. Hopefully it's not like Apple where they remove something and then next year everybody else does it. I think it should still be there because it's always been there and it is useful. It's not like it's H.264 is not a relevant codec right now. Anyways, I could go on about that forever, but you know what can't go on very well is the A380 when it comes to AMD CPUs. Third party outlets testing the card with a Ryzen 5 5600 and an i5 12400, roughly similar CPUs, not exactly one for one, but you know, you would expect them to be within a few percentage points of each other, especially on a lower end GPU. But it turns out that in every game besides League of Legends, the Ryzen CPU was worse, sometimes as much as 15%. You can see the benchmarks here where the Intel CPU actually provided the better setup versus the AMD plus the A380. Again, League of Legends notwithstanding, but Intel showing favoritism in their stuff, probably if, if I had to guess, not conspiracy theory of like, oh, Intel's like, jackhammer and AMD's performance into the ground, it's likely that they develop their drivers with their Intel CPUs. They're not good at drivers. It, it needs to be worked on. They need to get better at drivers. It, and so they, it's just like, that's what they did. That's what they've optimized for. And eventually they'll get around to optimizing for everybody else. But you should be grateful in the meantime that you even have any Intel GPU. And I hope you're grateful that hot news has returned. I'll be back on Monday for the more of the hottest tech news that's out on the internet. I've been your Brett host and I'll see you around. I didn't like that outro at all. <laughs>